one of the reasons that we can get away with using function components now instead of class components is with React hooks. Those hooks help us mimic some of the things that you might find in a class component, like the useState method replacing the actual state variable from a class component, or the useEffect replacing the lifecycle methods from a class component. One of the lovely features that React provides for you is the ability to create your own hooks. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to create your own React hook. Creating your own hook is going to be useful when you want to reuse the same function or the same method over and over again inside of your function components, especially when it comes to data that might be changing. In this example, we're going to take a look at fetching some data from an API endpoint somewhere on the internet, and then how to take that data and turn it into a hook so that we can call it from any function component more than once. Obviously, the key here is reusability, where you can take this hook and use it in different files using different settings passed into it. All right, guys, let's get into it. So here we can see a basic React TypeScript project that I've created with Create React App and my template being TypeScript. All this application does is it has a data state variable that's an array. And I call this API endpoint here. This is just a free to use API endpoint that returns some data. All of the data is the same in regards to the structure. So each data item has an ID, a completed bool, a title string, and a user ID number. It's pretty simple, and inside of my return, I'm just rendering each item separated by some dividing lines. There's nothing special here, and if you're experienced with React, you'll understand what's going on here. So the goal here is to take this use effect and this fetching that I'm doing here and turn this into a React hook. So let's briefly just look at our localhost 3000 because I already have this project running and you can see what's being returned here. Just basically all of the API information in a JSX map or what you can consider just a React for loop. This page isn't going to change as everything we're doing is going to be in regards to actually retrieving the data. The only thing that might change is how it looks when it's loading. So I'm going to copy and paste my use effect and my data up here, and I'm going to create a new file. In your source folder, create a folder called hooks, and inside of it, we're going to create a file called usefetch.tsx. That is going to be the name of our hook. We're going to export a const usefetch. This is going to be a function, and it's going to take in one parameter, which is going to be a URL, and that's going to be a string. Inside of the function, you can go ahead and paste in what we copied from our application. And then make sure to add all of your missing imports. I'm using Visual Studio Code, so this comes up for me in a menu. Next, I'm going to add the URL to the use effect dependency array, because anytime we change the URL, we want this hook to be called and update our data. Inside of the fetch, change it to the URL string. And then at the bottom of the hook, go ahead and return the data. So right away here, we already have our basic React hook finished. It's not very complicated, but it's going to do the job for now. We're going to come back and update this in a little bit. So back in our application.tsx file, go ahead and copy the URL out of the fetch and then erase the use effect and where we set the data. So now you're going to have some linting down below saying, hey, this data variable doesn't exist. No problem. Make a const data equal to our use fetch and then pass in the URL. Now, if you save this and you go back to the web page, everything should still be rendered fine as the data is still being retrieved basically the same way. You can see that it loads super briefly, but the data is retrieved so fast that it doesn't even matter. So if I hover over my data, you can see that right now, as we had it set before, the data is just an array of any variable. Since we're using TypeScript, we want to tell our use fetch hook some way to actually tell us what the type is being returned or the interface or what the object actually is. So how we're going to do that is we're going to make some modifications to our use fetch hook. First, we're going to actually define what this data is at the top. Create a new interface and call it your I to do item or whatever you want to call it, depending on the data you're retrieving and then define the data you're actually returning. So in this case, it's an ID that's a number, a user ID that's a number, a title that's a string, and a completed that is a bool. Now that we have this, we're gonna to go to the use fetch itself and make a few subtle changes. In front of the parameters of the use fetch, we're gonna add some chevrons and inside it, you're gonna put a capital T and then a comma. 
In TypeScript, this is how you declare a generic interface or generic type that you're going to want to use inside of this function. Next, what we're going to do is inside of our parameters, we're going to add an initial state. And this is going to be of type T because we're going to be passing this type in. Next, inside of the use state, you're going to change that variable type to a T. And then inside of its initial value, you're going to put initial state. So what this is doing for us is we are telling our use fetch hook that we want this initial state and this data to be of type T. And we're going to tell it what type T is and provide an initial value as well. So now if I hover over data at the bottom, you can see that instead of any with an array, it's actually showing me that it is returning the type T or our generic type. So we're going to go back to our application now and fix up our call just a little bit. Go ahead and in front of the use fetch brackets, go ahead and pass in our generic type, which is going to be our I to do item as an array, because we know that's what we want being given back to us. And then pass in the initial data set as an empty array, because we don't have any values when we start up this program. Now, again, if we take one more glance down here at what we're returning, basically we're saying if this data has a length greater than zero, render the data for me. If not, just say that we're loading the data. So that data is going to show loading until it actually fetches, and then it'll fetch for us properly. And if we hover over our item inside of our data.map, you can see that it is now an I to do item, so we know exactly how it's defined. If we go back to the page and refresh, you'll see that nothing has changed because everything is still working properly. Now, finally, let's make one more modification and let's add a second variable to our use fetch hook. What we're going to do is we're actually going to provide the user with another variable for loading to see if the data has loaded or not. Right now, we're just checking the length to see if it's loaded, but we can actually do this a much better way. We're going to go back to our use fetch and we're going to add another state variable called loading with a setter function, and it's going to have an initial value of false. Once we do that, Inside of the use effect at the beginning, you can call set loading to true, which means that we are now fetching this information. And then in the then block or after the then block, rather, you can add a finally block where it's just having a function pointing at set loading to false. So after it loads the data, we're not loading anymore. At the bottom in the return, we are now going to return an array of items. So first it's going to be data and then it's going to be loading. And since we're now returning an array with different types, we have to define the order at the top. So after our parameters, you're going to declare the type that it's being returned. And that's going to be an array with our generic type first and a Boolean second. Go back to the application.tsx and then throw the data inside the array. Now, before you add the loading variable, you'll notice that it still doesn't error out. And that's because with React hooks, if they're declared in an array like this, you don't have to take each item. You can take them in order if you want them. So if I just leave it as data, this is still going to work just fine. So now let's go back to our use fetch hook and let's add a set timeout inside of our use effect. And we're going to set this to 1500 milliseconds. And I'm doing this because I want to show you the loading in action because it just glosses over it extremely quickly. So just throw in a set timeout and then throw your fetch on the inside. And I'm just doing this again to show you as an example. You don't actually have to do this, but if you want to see it work in real time, this is how you could do it to test it. Now that the set timeout is inside of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this data map inside of my application.tsx and I'm going to copy it or rather cut it and then just only return that inside of my div. Now we can add the loading variable to our use fetch call. And then we can check to see if we're loading. And if we are, just return a paragraph that says we're loading. Now, if you go back to the web page and refresh, you'll see that the loading takes 1.5 seconds and then the information is loaded for us. And just like that, you've created a React hook to fetch some data for you that you can reuse inside of your components over and over again. If you know the type that is going to be returned to you, for example, an array of to-do items, or maybe one giant piece of JSON that you have defined as a type somewhere else, you can pass in anything you want as long as it matches the data being returned to you. Also, with this hook, you've learned how to use a TypeScript generic type, which can be pretty useful for you creating functions in the future. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe, and if you're feeling really generous, you can buy me a coffee so I can bring you guys more videos all right, guys, thanks so much for tuning back in, and I'll see you in the next one.